Well, are we ready for the pledge today? Oh, wait, they're on mute. We have we have a special guest on today that's gonna do the pledge for us. Are you here, special guest? Hello, everybody. Oh, wait a minute. Where's all the kids at? Hello. Oh, oh, hi, kids. How's everybody doing this morning? Mr. Monkey. Hey, hello. Hi. Hi, Mr. Monkey. Hi, hi. Everybody looks so ready to learn today. Mr. Monkey. Ash, why don't you pin him? Okay, so. Is everybody? Hello, hi. Hi. Everybody, everybody ready to learn today? Okay, kids. I can't see. Are we gonna do our prayers today? So I want everybody to put their hands on their Bibles. See? Here's my Bible. So my hands on my Bible, okay? Nick, where's he at? Uh, he's pinned on the main screen. Can everybody see him? Can everybody see me? I don't see money. No, Ginger's on the main screen. Ginger's got her mic to it. Hi, Marty. There we go. Uh, there. Hi, everybody. It's me, Mr. Monkey. Marty's my good friend. He's not here today. Oh, is he? Marty, are you out there? I'm here, Mr. Monkey. Oh, hi, Marty. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? We finally made I finally made it on ABC. Yep. No, CBS. Yes, didn't I say that? ABC. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Um, Let's do the so pledge. We're going to do our pledge today. So, has everybody got their hand on their Bible? I got my hand on mine. I'm ready. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. To the Bible. God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against the heart. Amen. All right. Oh my goodness, you guys did great. Everybody did great. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Monkey. We love seeing you and having you on CBS. We're so glad you made it. Nice oh, I love Monkey. being here. I, I already I have my cereal. Monkey. You have an encouraging word for all the Team Monkeys out there? Oh, Team Monkey, they're doing a great job. They're doing the best, better than any monkey, okay? I, can, I can't say it any better myself, you know. <laughs> you guys are doing great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Monkey, we're going to go to the... Mr. Monkey, put your our class Bible on your head. Bible verse, so stay tuned in, Mr. Monkey. Listen to our Bible reading, okay? Okay. So let's all get our mics. Yes. All right, we're going to read Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And today we're going to have Mr. Monkey help us with our memory verse for this week. And it's verse five. Sorry. I mean, Mr. Lion. 
Marty the Lion, you ready to do the oh. Bible verse with us, Marty? Yep, I'm ready. Okay. <clears throat> We're ready when you are. All right, kids. Repeat after me. Listen. How to be blessed. How to be blessed. Psalms 1 5. This is my side. Therefore, the ungodly. In the judgment, in the judgment, sinners, sinners, in the congregation, of the righteous. Psalms 1 5. New King James Version. New King James Version. Topic. 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 That was great, kids. I'm proud of you. You're doing a great job. Anna. Keep right. We're up by some points. Keep going. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ma uh, Mr. Marty the Lion. If we could get everybody to mute their mic. Hi, Marty. Do you, do you have anything to tell us, Marty? Um, everybody keep up the good work. Team Lion is ahead by some points. We're going to win. If we keep it up. Keep posting your scriptures and your off day work and your arts and crafts. They're all doing a great job. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Marty. You're welcome. I love you, kids. Thanks, Marty. Thanks. You're welcome. I love you. I love you, I love you too. Okay, Mr. You. Mr. Marty. You, Thank Marty. you so much. We loved having you and Mr. Monkey on today. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. To oh, the boat no problem. Anytime. Okay. I have no problem. I love all the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Monkey. It was really nice to see you today. It was nice to see all you guys. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Well, today we're getting pretty close Hi, on our scoreboard. Monkey. It's a pretty close time. Bye. So... We're going to listen to our Bible lesson. Put your head on your Bible when you get home. Okay. He <laughs> did. <laughs> so we're going to listen to our Bible lesson now. So we got to listen to the lesson so we can understand our, our papers and we got to get the secret code. Nick's going to give us a secret code today. When we see him touching his eye, see when he touches his eye, that's when he's going to give us the secret code for the extra points. So we got to pay attention when he touches his eye, okay? So, okay, Nick, we're all ready to hear our lesson. And, and let me show you our color page for today. Let me show you. Let me get it. We have two color pages today. It's the, can you see it? The picture of the cross. And then we have the picture of Jesus when he came out and the tomb is empty. So we have the empty tomb. And the cross. So we're ready to go. Thank you, Shell. And thank you, Lord, that the tomb is empty. So we start off our lesson this week. We recap last week. We learned that this whole Jesus week, right? The first lesson we learned, it's all about him. He's the main character of the whole Bible. And everything we learned is all about Jesus. And last week we learned that he came as a baby, two weeks ago he came as a baby, born true Mary. And last week he had all of his disciples with him the night before he was going to go to the cross. And he gave them bread that represented his body. And he gave them juice that represented his blood. Just like Moses did with the family in the Passover, right? They put the blood on the door and they put the... Uh, they ate the, the lamb and they drank the blood and that made the God's weapon pass over them and keep them safe from God's weapon. And Jesus came and Jesus says to his disciples, if you drink the cup of wine and the cup of 
uh, eat the bread that I give you, then I'll drink the cup of wrath for you or the cup of God's anger for sin. So when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus drank the cup of God's anger for sin so that we could drink the cup of juice and be friends with him. So thank God that we get the juice because he took the anger. And Jesus traded places with us so we could be friends with God. And so thank you, Jesus, for that. Let's pray and thank Jesus for trading places with us. And then we're going to get into our lesson. So, Lord, we thank you, God, that you sent Jesus, Lord, your perfect agent, Lord, your, your promised agent, God, who came and took our place. We traded places with him, Lord. We became righteous, Lord. Lord, and he took our sin punishment on himself. Lord, your good, righteous anger for sin, Lord. Lord, and because of your love for us, Lord, you provided that, God. We thank you, Lord, that your love provided a way for us to be made free, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So today's lesson is we learned that Jesus drank the cup. And after Jesus was on the cross, Jesus was taken off of the cross and he was placed in a tomb. Right? So when Jesus was placed on a tomb, before he was placed in a tomb, Jesus had some last words. Everybody pay attention. Look up. Look up. Jesus had some last words on the cross. And Jesus' last words on the cross was, it is finished. I'm going to say it again. It is finished. So what was Jesus' last words on the cross? It is finished. It is so, finished. You know what it is finished means? It means paid in full. Jesus paid our sin debt and he drank the whole cup for us. So we get to go free because he went to the tomb for us. And while Jesus was in the tomb, he was in there for three days. He was in the tomb for three days. And uh, there was a lady who was a follower of his disciples whose name was Mary. Now, not his mom. His mom is also Mary. Charlie said, thank you. <laughs> That's right, Charlie. Thank you, Jesus. So three days later, she comes to the tomb, and her name is Mary. And we're going to read what happens to Mary in John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. So if you got your verse papers, even Anna kind of wrote on mine. But that's okay. We're going to read our verse papers. John 20, 11 through 18. But Mary, right, not his mom, this is a friend of his, stood with outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked inside the tomb. And she seen two angels in white sitting, the one at the right where Jesus' head was and the other at his feet. But where the body of Jesus was laying, I'm sorry, where the body of Jesus was laying, but Jesus' body wasn't there. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. So she thought that somebody came and took Jesus' body out of the tomb. And when she said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew that it was and knew not that it was Jesus. So she looked back and seen Jesus standing behind her, but she didn't recognize him. She didn't know it was him yet. So Jesus said unto her, woman, why criest thou? Why are you crying? Whom who do you look for? Who seekest thou? She's supposing him to be the gardener. So she thought Jesus was the gardener. She didn't know it was Jesus. She was crying, right? Her eyes were all full of tears. And she looked back and she didn't recognize Jesus. Jesus didn't reveal himself yet to her. And he says, why are you crying? And she supposed him to be the garden. She said unto him, if thou hast borne him, hence, tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away. So she says to the gardener, hey, if you took Jesus's body away, let me know where it's at and I'll come and get it because I want Jesus's body. And then Jesus said, and she don't even know that she's talking to Jesus. And so then Jesus said unto her, Mary. 
And she turned herself and said unto him, Teacher, she knew it was him. She heard his voice and turned and knew it was him. And Jesus makes this promise. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and they know me. And when he called to her name and said, Mary, she turned and seen and she knew it was Jesus. So we thought she thought that Jesus was dead and that Jesus was taken away from the tomb. But instead, Jesus is alive. So Jesus is alive, kids. You guys all follow me. Look up at the screen. He's not in the tomb anymore. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. So we're going to have a special song. We have someone on here today who's going to sing us a special song about Jesus being alive. Are you ready for the song? It's early Sunday morning, just like Jesus said. He rose the curse of sin and death, and he rose up from the dead. Now we have a new beginning in a kingdom that has no ending. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Jesus is alive. Death has lost his victory. And the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. He's alive. He's alive. He's become the The first and last is his. The first sin is broken. We have perfect liberty. Lamb is He's alive. Finisher of our faith, stone laid through the way is a cornerstone today. Death has no more victory, and the grave has no more sin. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! A wonderful counselor, a mighty God is He. The everlasting Father, He's the precious Prince of Peace. He's the Word that lives forever. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Jesus is alive. I like how that song says that the, the grave couldn't keep him. The tomb couldn't keep him because Jesus was God's perfect agent who came. And Jesus was the only one who could conquer the grave. And he was the only one who could drink the cup. He's the only one who could stand by the burning bush of God. He's the only one that can take it all for us so that we get to be God's friends, we get to be God's family. Thank you, Jesus, that he took our place. So let's go back to our reading. We're going to finish up. And when Jesus says, it's on like the, there's five from the bottom. Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, teacher, which is to say master. So Jesus said unto her, touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father. But watch what he says here. It's so important. He says, go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father. To my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. So since Jesus rose from the grave, that means the payment was accepted, paid in full, and now we all get to be God's family, right? Because Jesus says, I go to my God. He says, tell my brothers. So Jesus calls us his brothers. 
That's so awesome that Jesus calls us his brothers. That's what he's talking about, his disciples. The same disciples who left him a few days before, now he tells them, tell my brothers that I'm going to my God and their God. I'm going to my father and your father. So we could say what our brother Jesus, that God is our God and he's our father. So thank God Jesus made a way. So we are all one now in Jesus' body. Jesus made all of us one. The Bible says that he brings us all together and we're his body and he's the head. And there's a very important, you guys need to look up at the screen. So there's a name for Jesus' body. So before everybody, all of God's family wore coverings. All of God's family sat in the ark. All of God's family was in the house. Now all of God's family has to be found in Jesus' body. And I'm going to tell you the name of Jesus' body right now. Ready? The name of Jesus' body is the church. I'm going to say it again. Jesus' body is the church. So one more time, just so we're all we all know. What is Jesus' body called? The church. The church. Right, so Jesus was on the cross and he said, paid in full. And he came back and said that his church is, I'm sorry, the body is his church. So if you want to be in the body, you got to be in the church. So Jesus' body is his church. So what is the mission of the church? Who remembers what Jesus' mission was? He was God's agent who came here to the earth, right? And God told Jesus to go and seek and save the lost. Seek and save the lost. So if that was Jesus' mission and now we're Jesus' body, ain't that our mission? So if we're a part of Jesus, that means his mission is our mission. So we're going to read about it. Let's see what he says in Matthew 28. Let's go to our verse paper. And let's read it. It says, go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So Jesus' body is one because of Ephesians 4. I'm going to read it. we got to read our verses, okay? It says, this is why we've become one in his body. It's 4, 12 through 16. It says, for the perfecting of the saints. We're the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Who's the body of Christ? The church. The church is the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature and the fullness of Christ. So we would henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head. Jesus is the head, right? Even Christ. From whom the whole body, who's the body of Christ? The church. The whole body, which is Christ, the whole body fit together, compact it together, that every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. <coughs> Maketh increase of the body, the church, unto the edifying of itself in love. So God's body, Jesus' body is his church. And this is what he says. He gives his church a great commission. Here's the command. Ready? The mission of Jesus was to seek and save the lost. And now he commands his people to go and seek and save the lost and continue his mission because he wants to grow God's family, build God's family, right? Like Noah did, like Abraham did, like Moses did. He wants to build God's family and invite all people to come and be in his family and be a part of God's church to be in his kingdom forevermore. And now Jesus is getting ready to leave. 
So after he gives them a command, he tells his disciples he's leaving. And they get sad. And he says, hey, I'm leaving, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send you another one to come and be with you guys. Because I'm going to watch you and I'm going to take care of you. And let's read what he says in John 14. This is why he left them. Watch. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So guess what? He's coming back. Jesus is coming back. So he left, but he left with a promise that he was going to come back. He says, hey, I'm leaving. You go invite everybody to be safe in my body, the church. And listen, the mean kingdom, they can't mess with the church. The Very mean quiet. kingdom can't come against God's church. There's a promise in the Bible that says the mean kingdom cannot mess with God's church. So we're safe in Jesus's body now. And Jesus invites us to go and tell the whole world to give God's family invitation. Hey, come join God's family by joining his church because he's going and preparing a place for the church. And he's coming back for us when he's ready. So here it is. Ready, kids? It's very important. Jesus left, but he's coming back. Did you catch that? I'm going to do it again. So Jesus left, but he's coming back. So teachers, make sure you caught all them code words. There was three of them. And make sure the kids get them in the next lesson. So last question. Jesus is coming back. Why? Why is he coming back for? Why? He's coming back. I'm going to tell you why he's coming back. Why he coming back? So for 2,000 years now, Jesus could have just stopped everything then and took his family away 2,000 years ago. But guess what? He wanted us to be in his family. He wanted Charlie and Simon and Georgie and Mason and all these people I see, all these beautiful faces on this screen. He wanted us to be in his family. So he told Jesus said, well, wait, I'll keep my family safe because the mean kingdom always keeps coming back. Right. The mean snake keeps coming back and messing with God's family and messing everything up and getting them deceived. So yeah. Jesus made a way for God's family to be safe, completely and totally safe from the mean kingdom, from all of his lies and deception. And it's from being in his body that when we come inside the church, we become a part of a local body, right? We are inside of Christ and we're safe from the mean kingdom. And when Jesus comes back, he's coming for his church. So remember, Jesus is coming back for his church that he bought. It says he bought it with his own blood. He purchased his church. So he's coming back to take it that where he is, see how it says it in 14.3? I will receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. So we get to be where Jesus is. We're going to go to heaven where Jesus is because he's preparing a celebration. You guys ready? We have a celebration to go to and it's a wedding. We have a wedding celebration to go to where Jesus is like the husband and the church is like the bride. So like when a man and wife get married, they become one together and they start a perfect family. Well, the perfect family is Jesus, the husband, and the church is the bride that he purchased with his blood. They come together and they make one perfect family for all of eternity. And it don't stop there. Jesus, when he comes back with one hand, he's going to take all of his family to himself. And with the other, he's going to take all of the mean kingdom and they're going to be totally punished, separated for destruction, right? The Bible says, and they'll be put in God's prison, locked up, right? He's going to lock them away so that they could never mess with God's family again. They could never interfere again. And watch, there'll be no more sickness. We all know about Corona, right? Everybody's dealing with COVID right now. There'll be no more sicknesses, no more headaches, no more tears. He says he'll wipe away every tear from our eye. And we will forever live with Jesus as his family. 
safe and separated from the mean kingdom. And we'll give praise and glory to God and the lamb that he came and bought us to be his special family for all of eternity. So thank you, Jesus. Let's thank Jesus again. Let's thank him again for everything that he did for us. And then we're going to go to our main rooms after we have a, well, I have a final thing I want to say to us. So let's thank Jesus that we get to be, because he drank the cup, we get to go free. And because he resurrected, he's going to come back for us. Remember, he's coming back. And we have to be ready and waiting for him when he returns. Right? So let's pray. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, thank you again, Lord. Lord, for what you've done for us on the cross. Lord, you paid it the debt in full, and you drank the cup for us that we could be the family, Lord, and you gave us a safe place, Lord, to live and wait for your return, that we can't be bullied no more by the mean kingdom, Lord. It's your body, Lord, the church that you purchased with your blood, and Lord, we accept your invitation to be a part of your church, a part of your body, Lord, and we thank you, God, that you made a way. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's our last verse. Last verse. I know I say last verse a lot. Matthew 24, 37. You ready for it? This is uh, ETPN, ZBS edition. This is what Jesus says about when he comes back. Are you ready? Jesus says in verse 36, but of that day, what day? The day he comes back. No one knows the hour. Not even the angels in heaven, but only my father knows. So only the father knows when Jesus is going to come back for us. But as the days of Noah, we know Noah. We know the days of Noah. As the days of Noah, so were, I'm sorry, the days of Noah, so it would be when the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus is the Son of Man. For before the days of the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So when Jesus comes back, we got to be ready and waiting inside the ark. And what's our ark? Who's our ark? Jesus. Jesus is our ark. We have to be ready and waiting inside of him. We have to be eating of his, uh, drinking of his blood right the juice and eating the bread which is like eating the lamb that moses and them did so that they were safe from the weapons because when jesus comes back right he's going to wash away all the mean kingdom and save all the family that's a part of his church so we got to be ready and waiting for him so our final commission you ready jesus commanded his disciples and now I want to say all the graduates, possible potential graduates, we got to make sure and pass all of our grades next week, right? So study hard. So all you ZBSers of 21, the Lord commands you, right, to be faithful and build his family, build his church, be faithful to him and command, tell everybody to come inside the church because Jesus is coming back for his church. Amen. We're going to go to. I believe we're going to go to our classrooms. We're going to welcome on Sister Michelle. Michelle, are you out there still? Yeah, I'm here. We want to pray and go to our rooms. What do you want to do? Yeah, we'll go to the room. All right, let's pray. And we're going to go to our rooms and we'll break it all up. And remember, the three bonus words. Remember them. They were out there. Your teachers know them. So, Lord, we thank you, God, again. But I know... Lord, that you are coming back, Lord. Lord, and people think, Lord, that you're not coming back because it's been a long time, Lord. Lord, but it's only because you're waiting so long, Lord, because you want people to be in your family, Lord. You want all people, Lord. Lord, I thank you you didn't come back before, Lord, that we wouldn't be in your family, Lord. But you wanted us to be in your family, so you waited, God. Lord, you gave us a safe place to hide, Lord, to be safe, God. And that's in your church, Lord. It's in your body, God. Lord, you purchased us, your bride, Lord. We thank you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen, kids. It has been a pleasure and an honor. Go to your classrooms and enjoy your uh, last arts and crafts time until next week. So, bye, everybody. Oh.
próxima. Bye, Dada.